this has been now again uh, increased. There are CAT2, which uh, narrows the distance again up to 30 meters. And then CAT3, A, B, C, CAT3, C, ILS it is an instrument landing system which allows a pilot to land blind. It doesn't require any visibility. It doesn't require anything whatsoever. He has got everything on board. He can just go ahead and land on the rocket. And thereafter, taxi back also the dispersal without any visual reference. That is the beauty of aviation. How it is, how it is. Uh, but of course, public. with the necessary clearance. Yes, of course. Those clearances will be ATC is all the time very, very closely monitoring. So the uh, approach takeoff landing. That is why I said you know that air traffic controlling is a very challenging, difficult job because you are sitting outside the aircraft, trying to be a part of the aircraft. You, you are almost like uh, an extension of the pilot who's sitting in the aircraft. And he depends on you in a big way to ensure that his flight is completed successfully, is commenced successfully and completed successfully. So you're a very vital cog in the whole uh, set of operations that the aircraft uh, is undertaking. This is as far as approach is concerned. And then third part is your area control service, which is in the upper airspace when you are on the en route segment, then that looks after and provides you all the necessary information. It is very important for uh, you to know that uh, there is a system of cruising level which has been decided that if you are going from say north to south, then you can fly uh, only uh, even thousand feet. If you are going from uh, south to north, then you can fly like say from 360 to 179, you can fly only or 1000 feet. As far as IFR, there are uh, flying on instruments, they are flying on visual. So depending on whatever you are doing, that levels are allotted in such a way that two aircraft will never get on, get head on uh, with each other because they will be at different levels. It is only when they start changing their levels is the challenge starts. And there is where the ATC's role comes in because they have to ensure that they get the aircraft to descend while it is coming in for landing through other aircraft safely, safely that particular aircraft and safety of other aircraft as well and reverse where it, when it is going again to ensure that it climbs safely and attains its uh, cruising level. That's the gamut of uh, air traffic controlling in the entire airspace. <coughs> right. So, so uh, now having uh, seen uh, the complexity of the air traffic services and the controlling as such, uh, it's a very challenging uh, task. It's a very challenging uh, profession, I must say. Now, how do you go about training these uh, ad courts? This ATCO, you know, basically, as I told you, at Air Force Academy itself, we have our training establishment. And it has been modernized to an extent where we have the state-of-the-art simulators available for both BFR as well as IFR flights. So it's a complete gamut, you know, which has been covered over there. Very important us are there. It was there during our times also when I was an instructor there. That was the time actually the radar simulator manufactured by our own Tata came into uh, operations and it was very, very successful. Coming to the courses, you start with that. There is a basic air traffic control uh, uh, officers course, which has been now uh, renamed because law has also been air law has also been included into that. Then you also have the advanced course, and then you also have the radar course. So there are three courses, you know, which have been conducted at Atwood uh, for different levels of seniority. The ab initio courses, as far as uh, the first entrants are concerned, it is the basic course, which gives you an exposure into all elements of aviation, whether it is weather, that is meteorologic or it is principles of flight that is flying, or it is uh, technical information, uh, AEL, AEM, you know, telling you about uh, navigational aids, about signals, about uh, uh, communications, surveillance systems, or even uh, you have very important element is your rescue and crash fire fighting, which is associated with ATS. So air traffic control units are also looking after the rescue and crash fire fighting where in case there is an aircraft emergency, these are the people you know who are activated by ATC. They work in close liaison. Actually, as a matter of fact, in the aerodrome control towers, just beneath on the ground floor, aerodrome control towers are generally elevated. In uh, in Indian Air Force, normally the height of the ATC towers is 70 feet, and at the ground floor, you know you have your uh, crash tenders, ambulance, and other vehicles which are parked there. They rush to the site. Actually. A study has indicated that it is only in the 
eight kilometers in immediate vicinity circle of the aerodrome that you have maximum chances of saving lives. So their role and service assumes tremendous amount of importance. So this becomes a very important part of your training, though you yourself not doing any firefighting or aircraft, but you are acting as a supervisor in the sense that you may be required to guide them for which you must have uh, basic as well as maybe some applied information courses are being conducted for firefighting for officers as well at uh, DIPR here in uh, Delhi. Uh, they are given that exposure and um, it is very important for you to understand each and every nuance of training which is being given to you in terms of uh, you, you know preventing collision between aircraft, collision between aircraft and uh, obstacles. Very important, expedite and maintain an orderly flow of air traffic. Not only separating aircraft is good enough, you have to separate it in such a way that they meet their demands. That's the biggest challenge. That if somebody wants to take off at 10.30, he should take off at 10.30 regardless of whatever number of aircraft may be operating under your control. So how you manage that, that's the biggest challenge. And there will be aircraft coming in also. And the most beautiful part and most challenging and yet most satisfying is that you plan because there is no surprise. Everything is available. All the information regarding which aircraft will fly, which will come, which will go, is all available to the ATC well in time. But does it happen that way? It doesn't happen in real time. There are many changes because of weather vagaries, aircraft unserviceabilities, pilots unavailability, nav aids problems. There's so many issues, so many variables are there that end of the day, what has been planned is something, what happens is something else. Absolutely. So you have to uh, cater to that. That's the biggest challenge. And if yes. you can do it smoothly, if you're well prepared, I'm absolutely confident that anybody can pull it off. And if you do it smoothly, there cannot be a better feeling than that. You know, you'll be the most satisfied person on this mother earth. It's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. I've experienced it so many times. So I can tell you with tremendous amount of conviction that uh, this is the job. If you're looking for a job, this Absolutely. is the job you know, which will take you place. Absolutely. So very, very satisfying. So how how uh, long is this basic uh, training for the fight, uh, for the air traffic controllers? So once... You know, you have commissioned into the administrative branch. Now, thereafter, you know, you are nowadays bifurcated into the air traffic controllers and fighter controllers. So, as far as the air traffic controllers are concerned, how much is this basic course, how duration? And thereafter, you know, of course, they must be getting posted to active units and things like that. Uh, of course, you know, so, uh, training or learning is a continuous process in the service. But at least, you know, what is the basic training and... Uh, now, what are your experiences? You know how uh, the difficulties and the challenges. How people cope up with this training? So uh, basically, you know, the course is for six months duration, the uh, basic course, wherein you are given exposure of all this, and at the same time, you are also given exposure of the practical aspect of it, the flying as it takes place. Uh, uh, you know, you are taken to uh, nearby uh, or maybe even. Uh, uh, far enough places, you know, Air Force bases as well as Naval bases. Plus, you have your own Air Force Academy tower over there, you know, where a lot of flying takes place. All the conversion flying, uh, all the ab initio flying there is taking place in Air Force Academy. So, uh, you are given that exposure and plus, as I told you earlier, that we have a state-of-the-art stimulator, wherein you get all the exposure of how the aircraft is operating, you know, from taking off to landing and doing circuits or going out of the local, out of the uh, immediate vicinity of the aerodrome into the local flying area and then coming back and landing. Of course, after six months, once you complete the course successfully, thereafter you are posted to any of the bases. Now, uh, here is where the challenge starts.